Hello friends, I'm Colonel Failure and this is Transport Fever and we're back in the Alps on the Gothard line once again. You join me, I'm, I'm hovering precariously above the docks at Thun, uh, waiting for this chap to come across the bridge, perfectly on time, perfectly on cue. Uh, and why are we waiting for the oil train to come across the bridge? I hear you cry. Uh, there's possibly a price for anyone who writes that in the comments. Um, we're waiting for this chap to come across the uh, the bridge here because it's the theme for today's episode. I know, it's the themed episodes, whatever next. Uh, basically, the theme will be upgrades. Lots of upgrades. Upgrades all the time. Um, uh, in the comments, there's been a, a reasonable amount of debate in the last couple of episodes about whether I should uprate the services that I'm already running uh, or whether I should stick to my standard goal of, uh, of not upweighting and instead uh, just, you know, plonking new stuff. Or should we, f we might as well follow this chap along, right? The comments have been suggesting that I, uh, I upweight the number of vehicles on different routes and the, uh, and the amount they're hauling and, and upgrade them and do the same with stations and all of that kind of business. My counter argument to that traditionally uh, is that uh, I, I don't upweight purely because I want to be able to cover something different in every episode that passes. This is quite scenic, isn't it? Um, and so, so instead of spending the money on, on uh, making each line as profitable as it can possibly be, I save the money in order to build something else in the next episode that comes up. All the time, uh, not skipping forward uh, unless I absolutely have to. Uh, in order to keep uh, in order to keep things rolling along, so uh, today I'm going to reverse that trend a little bit. Today is all about upgrades. So uh, the oil train here that we are we are lovingly following along can handle 84 units of fuel or, or oil as it's currently shipping on this incredibly steep slope, and uh, and I'd quite like it to be able to handle oh I don't know at least half as much again. Um, so I'm going to upgrade this, and, and what we're going to do in today's episode is we're going to upgrade various lines, uh, either with a bit more track or with a bit more uh, capacity, and uh, uh, we'll do an upgrade, and then I'll whiz forward a bit to make some cash back, and then I'll do another upgrade, and I'll whiz forward a bit. I imagine we'll probably burn through two years, uh, but, uh, but coming out the other end of that, we should be jolly profitable. Uh, how much is this chap going to pay off? A good chunk of cash. In fact, this guy probably pays off quite... Like, look, you're doing the best part of a million a year already. How much more can I possibly make? Well, you're going to have to stick around until after the bombastic intro to find out, aren't you? Right then, as mentioned, 84 capacity on here at the moment. Now, we're only running one train. The idea would be to run another train. Uh, but to be honest, I think this line will do just fine uh, if I uh, if I upgrade it to something else. Now it's got a relatively new, <laughs> relatively new, 14 year old train on there right now, um, and uh, and actually I can't even remember which one it is. Uh, vehicles, what are you? It's a KKSTB47, right? Okay which is one of the, it's a slightly odd looking one, isn't it, this one? Yeah, there we go. So at the moment, we've got a 50 kilometer per hour top speed, uh, power of 400 uh, and tractive effort, which uh, some people say doesn't do anything, uh, of 88. So 480 and 50, right. So we're gonna want a little bit more grunt than that because we're gonna strap a whole bunch more wagons to it. So 60, 800, so it's twice as powerful pretty much across the board twice as powerful as you see I don't, I don't know how I got so lucky with the number of Austrian trains I've got in here I must have someone must have bundled these together quite well now we could go for the the 108 here which is uh, which is relatively modern technology uh, it's pretty quick it's got a heck of a lot of power not so much on the old tractive though uh, what can the Russians do by comparison well much less cost uh, not a lot of hauling power. I think it's going to have to be something along these lines. What is it? How does the Atlantic compare? No, the Atlantic's not as strong. Cheaper though. My gosh, it's wet. it's very much cheaper. Uh, anybody else even remotely in a ballpark? Not if I want the speed. 
Now it is quite a long route, so as much as this will be a heavy train, so it might not, uh, it might not be able to to get up to full speed. Even if it does one kilometer an hour over the other ones, it's going to pay off better. Plus, with a hundred, it's going to pay off better. All right, that's what we're going for. There we go. Add. Something's just happened. Where's that gone? Onto the replacement should be right. Wagons. Uh, let's let's find uh, oil. What have we got here? So we've got these little tankers here. Now I need something that will do 100. Otherwise I'll be limited. 120. Okay, half a million a pop, which is it's expensive. Um, but nothing else comes close. In fact, two of those gets you 14. Yeah, you see, two of these would be better. That's for, for the, the amount of raw haulage. And it will do 80 at the top end. 36 a year versus 96 a year. I think we're going to go with these. Um, now, the fact that it says railroad here leads me to believe that this may well be an American, uh, uh, what would you call it, wagon, uh, can. Yeah, an American can uh, that we're sticking on the back of, a, of a, an Austrian tr uh, locomotive, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right, seven each. So how many do we want? We want 10. 15 takes you to uh, 105. Well, let's do that for starters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's now 6 million quid for a train. Uh, well, I say 105. So that's uh, 119. Uh, yes, it is. And because we prefer round numbers, we'll go one more. Which takes to 126. That's a that's a good length train right there. Now then, I need how much? 4.78 million. Yeah, I want to proceed, but I haven't got enough money. All right, okay, we're going to have to borrow that. Now this is though what you're about to see is oh hold on. What I was about to say, what you're about to see is the reason that this episode is going to be filmed in multiple filmed. Yeah, that's a very luxurious way of describing it. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be recorded in uh, in multiple chunks. Uh, replace now, 4.79, I need 4.79. Okay, right, I'm going to make the money for that and I'll be back. Right, we're there and, uh, and just inside the month. I'm going to replace it right now, just inside the month. It's been, a, it's been close to three months to, to make that kind of money. We got close to the, uh, the amount needed just before every month end. Uh, and then it would, uh, and, and then the, the running costs, as you'll see. So we've got 20, uh, we've got whatever that shows at the 30th of June um, before the whole thing gets, uh, gets hammered by running costs. Uh, on which note, I usually turn those off because they just fill the screen full of a very, uh, a very disappointing red. So here we go. We're coming up on about 100 grand in the bank, 200 grand. And then we go uh, 450 uh, into the red, so you're looking at about 700k uh, comes out of the comes out of the bank in uh, in running costs every month, and that's by no means cheap. Now we'll uh, we'll ride along with this chap. Uh, how far have you got to go there, fella? You got a you got a little way to go, just so we can see the the handover to the uh, the new technology. But while we're waiting for that, let's uh, let's have a quick look at the towns, because I know you all love them. Uh, right. Locarno is the uh, is the beast amongst beasts, uh, followed by Luzerne, Bern, uh, Bellinzona, Schwiz. Interesting, Schwiz is doing very well. Or Schweiz, maybe. Uh, followed by Ennebergen and Biasca and Muster and Ingeborg and Andermatt. These are all places we've been to. I've covered off quite a few of these, you know. Uh, Ilgau, Interlaken, Wolfenschiessen, uh, Inetkirchen, Altdorf. Mual Total, uh, Tvetsch, Unterschachen, uh, Truns, Erstfeld, uh, last episode's uh, edition, uh, Witznau, Wassen, Beckenried, Rialp, I haven't done anything there, Frutigen, I think there's a, isn't there a forest there or some such, I seem to recall, uh, and then uh, Erolo and Geschenen. And a, few, and a whole, oh, there's a whole bunch of places. There is, there is almost no chance uh, that this series goes the uh, goes the full distance. This is this is quite a long train, isn't it? 
uh, given that the uh, given that the engine just disappeared. There we go, 126. Now, on your first pickup, you'll usually leave stuff behind. So 116 or 126 we've got on board there. Look at this. Well, you're, now, you're now into some golden age of steam type behavior. But this is a this is a healthy looking train right here. And uh, I should have looked at the, uh, at the the price per kilometer on it, but uh, uh, my expectation is very high insofar as uh, insofar as this making solidly good money, um, it's likely to ba make bare cash uh, is what it's likely to make. Um, yes, that's that's what it's likely to make. I feel like such a fool. Uh, right. So, okay, so I, I want to follow this along just to see how well it pays off. We're going we're gonna to try and engage some kernel cam here, but I, I think I might be a bit quick for it. Yeah, just a, just a little on the quick side. Yeah, see, this is, this is my pr proprietary uh, camera software. Oh, look at that. You can't say that's not worth the price of admission. Now, the trick is the distance you are from the train. All right, so if you zoom out more, you go faster in relation to the train. But at, at this stage... Oh, it's like we're riding alongside! And it is much better than being on the cab, because you can get, uh, you can get lower down. And plus, you can, you can change your angle when you feel like it. When you decide to go for a bit of variety, you can, uh, you can change that up. Oh, I could do the entire episode like this. This is tremendous. All right, that's that's less tremendous. Nice view from below there. But we should be keeping pace, although the train will have slowed down because that's a wooden bridge. Yeah, we have got a bit ahead there. Oh, Colonel Cannon failed. Bum. All right, there we go. Let's keep up with it. Yeah, see? Look at that. Fancy tools, don't need them. Want to go to the other side of the track? No problem. There you go. See, all of this. This is, this is, this is all just filling time, of course, because uh, I want to see how much it pays off, and I thought you might like to come on the journey. Uh, but uh, this is only the first of, of several upgrades we do in this episode. Of course, that may well depend on uh, just how long it takes me to earn enough cash to, uh, to do the next bit. Come on, come on. Come on, that's it. Back on the back on the route again. Uh, it would also be interesting at this point to find out how fast we're going. See, it's starting to pick up a bit of speed now. It's easily starting to outpace the Colonel Cam. We could probably figure out how fast Colonel Cam moves, which is let. I think it's going to be about sixty. You know, I think Colonel Cam does about sixty kilometers an hour. All right, so it was worth getting something that only did uh, worth getting this over something that only did sixty. We know the wagons only do eighty. Now it's going to lose a bit of it's going to lose a bit of speed going up this hill, uh, based on it now it requiring more effort these days to go uphill. Now this thing's got a, a thousand uh, a thousand horsepower, I think. I know I, I may have just got that woefully wrong. In fact, there's a very high chance I got that woefully wrong. And so it hasn't actually lost an awful lot of speed, so which, is, which is a good sign. It means that there's plenty of grunt left in this beast uh, if I need to upgrade it further. Anyway, here we go. Hit, time for the payoff. I'm hoping for 400k. Uh, that, would be, that would be perfect. Thank you very much. 425. Uh, smashing, so full up, well, so with a full load, which is another 10, you're looking probably for 35, 440, something like that, which is going to be ever so good for uh, for bringing the cash in. Not least of all, because it's, uh, it's actually going to be converting much faster. And we just picked up all the fuel that this place had. That's brilliant. So are you producing right now? You are producing. Well, that's, that's a good sign. Uh, details... You've got 80 in stock. So presumably you are starting to refill the platform. You are not refilling the platform. Why are you not refilling the platform? You're using up all of the crude that I bought in. What are you doing with it? Where are you putting it? 
There, there's nowhere else you're allowed to put it. You're, you're supposed to be. Have you got some in stock here? You've got 200 and change actually stored right now. Right. Okay, you've got oil. There's crude. So you've got oil and you've got fuel. And you're still splitting it a little, but that's okay. Right, okay. Uh, what are we going to do next? What's uh, what's next on the list? Now, I've already upgraded the ship, so I did that before you got here today. Sorry about that. Uh, I upgraded a couple of them just to shift some more stuff around here. Uh, and it was the uh, the, the lumber line uh, I have already upgraded. Speak to me. The lumber plank tool service. Is that the right one? 21 of 100 tools. Are you just, are you pulling in here? I hope you are. I mean, I'd also hope that you had a few more tools. No, you're, you're pulling away. All right, well, first off, what did you just drop off? Secondly, uh, where is what you did? Because you should have dropped off some tools, right? Why, why have you not? Now, following the, following the patch, when it's been deployed, uh, ships will be able to uh, deal with multiple different goods types. Uh, and that, that should make for, uh, well, for quite some improvement in, uh, in the profitability of ships. Uh, because it will mean that a docks such as the one we've got here at Thunder... In fact, look, look at all this shipping going on here right now. And a train going over the top. There, there you go, transport fever. There's your back of pack screenshot right there. You can have it free of charge. Uh, what are you packing? Zero of 60 fuel. In fact, I think there's better ships available. Right, where are we going to go next? Uh, I've just paid out my end of month expenses, leaving me with 85k in the bank. Now, this year so far, we've spent 6.2 million on uh, new vehicles, and uh, we're only down 4.6 million. So we're pushing 2 million in profit if you exclude all of the nonsense that I've spent elsewhere. Hello there. That's a that's a uh, this is a this is some kind of rancheroo going on here. And what are you being picked up by? What's that? I can tell you for nothing that that train looks a little on the old side. That's a Keb 2, 34 years old. Not a whole lot of grunt going on on the Keb 2. So this is going to be my next my next upgrade target. Uh, although I'm not certain we need it, given that we've got LZN Food Bulk has got 137 waiting. So it's just a case of where is an LZN... Full f well, LZN is... Uh, LZN. For some reason I'm thinking I'm American. Uh, there we go. So that's got a regular... That's got uh, the, the cheap and cheerful basic ship on it. So simply by upgrading that, we've got two of them. Uh, yeah, that's the chat. How much do you want? Eight hundred thousand. Oh, I can I can cover that. Uh, I do wish to proceed. I just haven't quite got the cash right now. Uh, give me a minute. I'll make that happen. You lot, don't go changing. Okay, so I've paid the cost. Uh, about a month has passed. Um, now, the good news about the upgrade that we're going to be making to this ship is that, uh, firstly, it will have double the capacity afterwards, and, uh, and secondly, it will move a little bit faster. So the, the, the overall upshot should be that I don't actually need to, uh, uh, to add another ship onto the line. Now, I'd be quite happy, actually, to, to add another ship, but uh, the river's already a little on the crowded side, as I think we've pointed out before, and I'd like to get the docks properly uh, upgraded for next-generation operations uh, before I start clogging it up even more. So, but particularly, we're talking about Thun. Um, and I might, I might, make, might make Thun the city of bridges. It's already got two. I think if I add another six or seven, uh, not for just for aesthetic purposes, uh, but we could we could make Thun the uh, the Venice of um, Switzerland, I suppose, or Austria. I'm I'm really quite ropey on my geography in the area. All I know is that we've got we've got a bit of Switzerland, we've got some Austria, we've probably got uh, a bit of Italy kicking around in there somewhere. Um, I can't even rule out southern France, but uh, but it, that seems unlikely. Look at there we go, flipping love the Klondike. It's a beast. Uh, right, good. So there we are. So that's uh, that's another successful food drop off there. 
Uh, now, with with both those uh, both those trains doing that, I'm going to repay this. I'm not planning on any further upgrades this year. We're going to have to save up a little more. Um, with uh, with the, both the ships on this line now running the the superior Klondike, uh, we should see an uptick in uh, the money that they make, and as a result, uh, an uptick in the the overall profitability that we've got uh, in the whole of the, the the kind of the food network. And I don't mean the TV show, uh, right? Uh, TV channel, even right. I'm going to uh, I'm going to accelerate stuff again. Uh, and uh, and save up a little bit more, and then we'll then we'll have a crack at the food train. Okay, so it's now midway through uh, it's March, end of March in 1904, and uh, and here's the, the 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 little trooper that could. And it occurred to me actually that what I hadn't done was actually priced up how much it's going to cost to replace. Uh, hold on to your hats because it's not going to be particularly cheap. Uh, right, so this. Right now is a cab two. We don't want it to be a cab two. We want something else. Now we could easily uh, take exactly the same approach again if we just switch the locos here uh, and go with the uh, the 108, 1100 kilowatts of power, which is about 17 and a half horses. Um, but I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to use the same uh, loco twice if I can avoid doing so. Uh, so maybe we go with one that's just a little bit cheaper. Now the route's not quite as long, and actually I've got enough Austrian stuff going on here anyway. How does this? Yeah, you see that this the Russia would be fine, but its power is lacking. Uh, oh, what about this Great Western? Eighty kilometers an hour. This is a passenger train, if ever I saw it. Uh, it's the Duke class. Yeah, express passengers. Or oh, oh, I should put that into service forthwith. All right, leave that one with me. I'll uh, I'll get that done. The PLM is uh, very expensive for the amount of power it's got. The Mogul, four hundred versus the uh, the later edition Russian is four forty. Okay, so we well we've used a Mogul before anyway, and I don't want to get any older than that unless I have to. Uh, I'm planning on using this this double heading uh, Russian. I don't know what it is really. I'm planning on using that on the uh, on the iron, uh, either the iron or the coal line. Um, uh, madness, it, I'm sure, has overtaken me there. But but that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I think we will go with. And you're still looking at two million for one of those. You know what? I'm going to use the Russian, which I'm certain is a passenger train. All right, Atlantic, what have you got? 1.7. We're not going to use the 3.5 yet because that's clearly a, a, a passenger train. Um, uh, it's the, the, the first... And it actually ran on the Gothard line as well. I'd, I would have to be, you know, I'd be executed by train loyalists the world around uh, were I to fail to use it. This hasn't got the... That's not got the grunt. It's going to have to be one of these. It's going to have to be another Austrian. I have got a lot of Austrian trains. I, I'm pretty certain the variety picks up some uh, once we break into the diesel and the electric era. Uh, so I mean, maybe we, we take advantage of, uh, of our, our luxury uh, choice of, of, of Austrian trains for the time being. Right, what have we got here? Which one looks the most riveting? Oh, that one looks like fun. All right, we'll have that. And then we're running cattle here, so we're talking boxcars. Uh, we want to find one that, that originated in Europe. This is Finnish. A Finnish boxcar would probably do us proud. 80 kilometers an hour is plenty fast enough. Do you take livestock? You do take livestock. All right. Which is what we want. I don't better. Always, always advisable to know what it is you're planning to take. In fact, given that's a Finnish boxcar, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, my pal and yours, modder extraordinaire Mr. Onion Jack, uh, was... Uh, uh, was responsible for that. In which case, out of out of no small uh, piece of loyalty to uh, to Finland, uh, I will uh, I'll run it. It's only seven years old. We'll uh, we'll take it. Right, six. Current capacity is seventy two. So I'm going to need at least twelve to make up the same capacity. Uh, so probably, what are we talking here? In fact, I'm pretty certain that's what I'm running on there now. 
12, so 24 would be 144. So if we go for 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 5.3 million. What a bargain. What a steal. What have I got in the bank? Uh, I've got 1 million's worth of loan. Hold on. We'll repay a bit more. So 2.5 in loan. What did I say it was? How much do I actually need? 4.6. All right, I'll come back when I've got that. Stick around. Okay, we're almost there as far as getting the replacement back on is concerned. I'm moving around in a rather erratic fashion here. Uh, I just wanted, before we did so, uh, for you to appreciate the numbers that we've got going on here. So we're up 2.4, 2.5 million this year. Now, last year we approached uh, 13 uh, million in, uh, in overall revenue. Uh, this year we'll, we'll come close to that, but because I've been messing around with things, that can make it a little bit, uh, a little bit unstable. Anyway, I've got 4 million in the bank. As you will remember, I needed 4.6. Uh, so we'll hit that any minute uh, if we take it all out there. And uh, run the uh, run the instant replacement service. Uh, the instant replacement service. 4.62. That's what we're waiting for. Ideally, before this train arrives at the next station, it's going to be really close. Anything else can happen, and we'll make the money before we hit the next station. That would be the perfect time for it. And because it's so, uh, we've got it. We've got the cash. Pay it. We didn't have the cash. Replace now. Yes. There we go. That's all done. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's me up to my limit once more. And uh, as we come in here, you'll see we've got 181 cattle waiting. Now, hold on. Hold on. Pause. 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 Don't want to wreck this. Uh, the current uh, price per kilometre is 524. As we come in and switch over, that number had better go up. Uh, because well, and and when it does, the the benefits are going to be enormous. Because uh, firstly, we'll be hauling it faster. Uh, secondly, we'll be hauling more of it. All right, here we go. Get your unload out. Right, four seven. What was it before? I thought it was five hundred before. How is it four hundred now? I'm going to have to watch that back because I, I swear that just went down. Shouldn't be going down. Should be going up. All right, have I made some kind of a, a heinous, heinous error in judgment there? Anyway, regardless, what are you packing? 85. Again, first train out. Doesn't always take them all. Don't tell me I've put the wrong wagons on here. Now, I believe that... Was this capable of 60 or 80? I think it's 60. Uh, well, we'll find out in due course. It's going to get time to... Uh, to, to have a good run, although the uh, the bridge coming up will slow it down for a bit. Either way, this should be quite a nice payday, but I, I, was it 300 and something? I think it was 300 and something. Why am I thinking it was 500 and something? Maybe it was 500 and something. I'll, I'll have a look for myself. Uh, I'm sure you'll tell me immediately in the comments. It's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, you don't get to be uh, this many videos deep in YouTubing without knowing what people like commenting on. Uh, and in this case, I go, no, you've got it the wrong way around. You're, you're making less money now. You fool. I don't care. It was worth it. Look at that. That's terrific. Right, now, this leaves the uh, the next operation that we're going to do as far as uh, an upgrade is concerned. Uh, and that is to put the 3.5 into service somewhere. Uh, and, no, we'll, we'll put that, uh, that Great Western... Uh, we'll put the Great Western into service and we'll save up for the 3.5 because the 3.5 is very, very expensive um, for, for someone who has already maxed out uh, the good graces of the bank manager. Um, we're, we're just going to have to hang on for that. Look at that. I like it because it's properly, you know, black and rusty and it's, you know, it's, 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 all, it's, it's all business. That's, that's what we like about that. All business with the backdrop of the speckly mountain side. You know, if, if enough of you ask, 
I will do an episode that is basically just... Uh, what, what should we, how should we do it? We'll do uh, the music from Train Fever uh, on high speed. Not the music. The, 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 I'll do like a time lapse kind of thing of me deleting boulders off the side of a mountain. Each boulder cost me 10 bucks. Right? To give you how fast that's going to be... I haven't actually got the money for it. <laughs> I haven't got 10 bucks. Uh, good stuff. Uh, please hold. I'll have 10 bucks. I didn't even see how much that earned. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a totally useless for getting distracted. 18 food. What are you doing with it? Are you are you just, you know, are you sticking it out the back door to someone else who's got a who's got a nice contract with you? There you go. We've got 50 of this stored. Now, I know some of it's going over here. I mean, I honestly don't mind where it goes if it's, you know, if it's being consumed, that's all good. But it would be quite nice to pack the train out once in a while. Uh, and for that to happen, I'm going to need uh, at least a double service. Right, here you go. Right, look at all of that. Right, imagine that, right? So uh, I will do you a high-speed episode of me deleting rocks. Oh, God, what do I want for that? If my Patreon passes uh, the next milestone, there you go, you can have that. Uh, visit me on Patreon uh, if you want me to develop carpal tunnel syndrome, deleting rocks while the music from Train Fever plays endlessly, as it surely will in whatever afterlife it is that I'm heading for. Uh, I, I, I still dream of it, even though I've turned it off now. Um, there you go. One of the more unusual things that you'll find on YouTube there. Uh, I aim to be unique. Uh, anyway, right. I want to get one more passenger. I want to get a new passenger service in. Uh, that will, and then we'll uh, then we'll call it a day. So the question is, which passenger service are we going for? Now we've spent an awful lot of time. I'm going to go and have a look because uh, I'm going to have a look the right way. Yeah, that would be a good thing to do. Yeah, so so we've done we've done quite a bit at the moment uh, at the moment recently. Ennit Bergen, Beckenried, Altdorf, and then Erstfeld. Well, we'll we'll stop in on that probably in the next episode. Uh, and then we've also done a fair bit over here. Apologies for the swift camera movement. On uh, uh, what are we looking at here? On the, the these gigantic, ridiculous Russian numbers. Uh, speaking of which, what's that actually making me money wise? It's not even making much cash. 400k in profit last year. This was a poor investment. Uh, and I wonder whether that's due to... No, look, I mean, look, we've got passengers waiting, flipping everywhere. Look, just everywhere you go, passengers, boom. More passengers, more boom. Right, so I need a, I need another I need another service to, uh, to upgrade. Uh, maybe uh, Wolfenschiessen. That's... I mean, is it long enough to warrant it? Yes, it is long enough to warrant it. So there we go. Wolfenschiessen to uh, Ennitbergen. Currently running something ancient. There, there we go. And that is... What's that? It's a mogul. Is that a mogul? Yeah, it's a mogul. Looks like a mogul. Either way, it's covered in flipping rust. What are you? That's a general. It's not even a mogul. 53 years of age, needs upgrading anyway. That's going to be our target. Right, let's have a look and uh, <laughs> see how much this is going to cost. Right, we're going we're gonna to cross the Atlantic and, uh, and we'll stick this, uh, this Duke on there. Now, the Duke's capable of 80. Okay, all right, everybody got that? Capable of 80. Wagons, passengers, right, something... British, and if I can get something British, I'll take something American. Look at this three axle car. We'll do a hundred. I ah, see now that's not bad. Uh, do we have an alternative? The compartment car will only do 60, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, this Russian chap will do 90. Okay, have I used that anywhere? I don't think I have. Uh, we've got a Bavarian which are too slow. We've got this Keb which is too slow. The, this alternate Keb, too slow. Uh, we can't use the Clarestory because it's from the wrong side of the Atlantic and everybody will get very upset. Uh, so we've got this Russian which is 29, oh, uh, 29 tons. 
uh, or or we go with the six axle which is considerably lighter and it's capable of a top a better top speed at least it's german right at least it's coming from the right uh, the right side of the atlantic uh right i no, hold on the, no, no, everybody's yelling at me that the clerestory is actually oh god i don't know i could go and look it up right either way i'm gonna need to save up some cash uh i'm gonna do that now well, I'm glad you all passed the test there. As you jolly well know, the uh, the Clerestory is actually a Great Western Railways uh, coach. Uh, anyone who says otherwise uh, hasn't been to Wikipedia in the last couple of minutes. Um, so there you go. Yeah, all right. All right. So it is. It's totally suitable. So what I've got lined up here uh, is 80 passenger capacity towed by the 4-4 uh, the Duke. Uh, and it's going to set me back the princely sum of 3.42 million, which is actually pretty respectable. Uh, I've got 1 million saved. Uh, oh, how do we do overall revenue? Overall revenue, we did 13.9 last year, so up a million, uh, while only up half a million's worth of uh, uh, shebang, uh, with uh, 4.6, 4.7 in additional costs. Uh, that were drummed up along the way. So we're actually, that was a four million quid profit year there. Uh, once you start, you know, getting rid of the, the, the unnecessary deductions. Uh, anyway, I'll be back when I've got another two million quid in the bank. Okay, once again, we're ready to rock. It's just coming up on the end of September now, 1905. And uh, we've, we've actually made two million in profit this year which goes up to 2.5 if I hadn't had to pay loan interest. But, hey, look, we're not going to count that. So let's, uh, let's authorise this expenditure and then, uh, and then wait and see what this actually pays off when we switch it around. There we go. So, uh, so here's the, uh, the, shiny, the shiny, shiny new train. It might not take a full load this first time because people get nervous for some reason about riding on the new train. Uh, but it was doing three, four, nine, I believe, uh, per kilometre, and it's now doing five, seven, five. Oh yeah, that's that's the kind of improvement that we like the looks of. There we go. So this is a this is a, another recent acquisition from the workshop. Clearly by the uh, the same enthusiast that did the other GWR, the tank engine. Um, uh, so I'm not allowed to change the colour lest there be violence in the chat uh, but it's a, it's a good looking beast because it's using the same whistle as well which I also approve of uh, mighty fine whistle it has uh, with the uh, you see I, the more I look at these the more I go are you sure those aren't American don't even go there don't don't get the chat you know already that the comments have erupted man what's the matter with you you're trying to start a fight I mean, it's bad enough you've switched back to kilometres. That's going to bring out the measurement police. Oh, you, you're just you're, you're a non-stop scrapper. Uh, anyway, it's it's heartening to see that we've actually got uh, uh, one times driver uh, engineer and uh, and one times fireman on board here. Although uh, neither of them seem to be up to a lot. Both got a bit of a stiff neck, uh, and obviously we're going to have to wait uh, to make our first delivery. But it should it should pay off quite nicely. Now the old train was only making uh, twenty six thousand and change uh, per run, so I'm pretty optimistic that uh, that we'll do a little more than that with this one. Uh, also, uh, while we're in the area, uh, I think uh, well, I mean we know Thun's uh, overdue, uh, arguably very overdue an up as far as uh, as its infrastructure is concerned so the station of the docks and the roads and so forth but i think ennitbergen might also be due uh an overhaul now i've i took the dubious decision and i suspect if i go back and watch the episode i'll i'll come up with some vague justification for it uh but this is the end of the line here uh and uh, and i need to make this uh this terminal a little bit bigger so we've got uh no, I better, better go and ring some doorbells. Hello, folks. Uh, putting on notice, there will be some compulsory purchase action. Some eminent domain coming up in your neighbourhood. Uh, be prepared. 
Thank you. Uh, there we go. That's, that's that dealt with. Uh, because if uh, I want to upgrade this one relatively soon. In fact, one of the things I want to do in the next couple of episodes uh, is get at least one station uh, up to its close to final form, so I'm not having to revisit it. Now, in the last series, in the North Atlantic series, I, I kind of pre-planned uh, certainly my station placement in Europe uh, by blocking out the space that I'd use later. I think that's the thumbnail there, friends. Uh, let's have a look. It got delayed a bit, but it'll still pay up 49. All right, I'm not, I'm not completely overwhelmed with that level of profitability there, train. How about you, uh, you know, hustle a bit? Now, I don't know if you, if you lost out on some cash uh, due to uh, being held at the signal there, but that's at least part of the reason I want to upgrade it. So that's candidate one. Uh, for, uh, for for a major upgrade. Candidate 2, actually, since we're in the area, is over here in Vitz now, which is growing at a heck of a rate. Uh, and it would be good to get this station upgraded. Uh, you know, here's another... In fact, this, this is ancient. This is a train 4. I dread to think how old it is. Vehicles. 48 years old. Uh... Yeah, this is also due an upgrade uh, as it uh, languidly makes its way along the coastline here to uh, wherever the hell we are, Ingebol. Uh Yeah, and then I want to continue that along as well, uh, which will connect up to the uh, the outdoor main station. And actually, I think we could possibly do another one out there that heads direct to Schwiz. Oh, you can, you can see how this is going to pan out. Uh, anyway, right, to finish off with... Uh, did I say... I said we'd look at it in the next episode. All right, well, don't look at it in this one then. Let's go and find something new and, uh, and just follow it to... Uh, not you. We, we, we were just there. Let's go, let's go back to the oil train, which is where we began this particular odyssey. Uh, ships, what are you carrying? Nothing? Good? Brilliant? Uh, you? A hundred food. Yes, that's the stuff. And look at all of that cattle waiting as well. That's healthy. Uh, what have we got waiting here? 79. Well, that will fill out by the time the uh, the next ship arrives. What about... Uh, only 39 on there, but that's okay. What are, what are you doing profit-wise? Printing money. Right answer. Uh, let's keep going. What are you? Carrying nothing. Perfect. Absolutely ideal, that is. You're also... I don't know. I, I hope you're going the right way. Hold on, where do I leave me oil? Feels like we're getting perilously far away from it. This is all fuel. All right, where's the, where's the oil stop then? I get ever so... I get ever so mixed up going up... Bombing up and down this river, you know. It's... Where... Where... Where's the oil? No, it's down the other end. I'm sure it's down the other end, unless, it was, unless it's at Thun and something had just picked it up. All right, for your next test, where's Thun? It's over here, look. Oh, yeah, so it is. In which case, where the chuff was that ship going? It was probably going the right way, and you were just going the wrong way. Okay, right. It's all right. Everything's fine here. Uh, right, yeah. So, here we go. We've got uh, 118 uh, lumber. Then we've got 134 set of fuel going one way. We've got 63 going the other way. This is all This is all the right kind of numbers here. Uh, meanwhile, here's the oil train itself. What do you think? Bit of, uh, bit of underbridge view there. Maybe a little bit further along. Maybe ride the uh, ride the bridge itself. Don't f no no no. Don't I don't want to sink down. I don't want to have to zoom. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Oh look, that's an angle. Well, I mean, theoretically speaking, everything's an angle. Or is that literally speaking? Speaking in some fashion or another, everything's an angle. That's that's the one we want though. Right. Uh, quick look at the profits. Bosh, 1.8 last year. Terrific. Uh, right, thank you very much for watching. I've been Colonel. My good God, that's a great shot. Uh, and uh, I, I, 
now I hope you can appreciate why it is that uh, that I I don't run at maximum profitability by by maxing lines out. Uh, we have burned through almost three years uh, in upgrading three four separate lines there, and we haven't done anything new. This has all been the development of existing lines. So, uh, so if I occasionally uh, miss out on some, some, some gross profitability, it's only because uh, I like to keep the, uh, the series ticking along. Uh, this is now not such a great shot. Now there's nothing actually happening on it. Uh, either way, chuck a like at this one if you enjoyed it. I've been Colonel Failure. Thanks for watching and chuck me a subscribe. You've made it this far. I've edited and everything. There we go. Look, and a ship's pulling into view just for you because you deserve it. Hit the subscribe button. Do it. Do it now. Unless you already are subscribed, then don't hit it because I'll unsubscribe you. That would be a bad thing. Do the subscription thing. Thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you again very soon. Uh, he's clipping through the bridge there. Cheerio. Thank you.